Let's think about biofilms. Now, what is a biofilm? A biofilm is a population of microbes which is adherent to a surface, um, which is embedded in a polymeric matrix, mainly derived from the organism, but also possibly derived from the host. And this colonizes a particular interface, usually a solid liquid interface, but can it be a liquid air interface. Now, <clears throat> I was going to try and be clever and show this movie, but I don't think it works. No, I won't even try. In fact, why have we got that big black spot in it? I wanted to show you the... Mm. Oh, well. Very disappointing. I wanted to show you the... Oh, there we are. Um, this... No, it's gone. This is the typical... Um, in the oral cavity or at any epithelial surface, you can see the traditional, the classic um, arrangement of bacteria on such a surface. You can see these bacteria, small numbers, attached to the surface. Um, and that's the classic um, arrangement of bacteria colonizing a human being. But in the oral cavity, of course, we have the only non-shedding surface in the body, namely the teeth. Every other surface on the body is a shedding surface, so that when bacteria colonize either the internal shedding surfaces or the external shedding surfaces, once the bacteria reach a critical concentration, the, the cell dies and is shed and is replaced by a new cell from the um, basal layer of the epithelium. So it's very difficult to form biofilms on shedding surfaces. The teeth, of course, are non-shedding surfaces, as are medical devices. So the fact that these are non-shedding surfaces means that you can, huge numbers of organisms can accumulate on the surface of the tooth or a medical device. And this is a transmission electron micrograph of dental plaque, and this is a scanning electron micrograph of dental plaque. And for many, many years, that's the only real way we could look at dental plaque. Um, but remember, any form of electron microscopy involves a dehydration step, so the whole structure collapses, and from transmission and scanning electron microscopy, you can't really um, get to grips with the true structure of dental plaque. This slide I've called the many faces of plaque, because with the advent of confocal laser scanning microscopy, which does not require a prior dehydration stage, you can actually see the natural um, uh, uh, composition, the natural structure of dental plaque. And studies have shown that the structure of dental plaque is similar to the classically envisaged um, structure of dental plaque as, uh, uh, of, of biofilms as proposed by the Center for Biofilm Engineering at Bozeman a very famous place for biofilm research. So the structures of many biofilms, as are portrayed in this slide, they consist of mushroom-like stacks of organisms permeated by water channels. And we find that dental plaque, this is one of the first confocal images of dental plaque ever taken, 1998, and you can see the structure of this dental plaque on the tooth surface. And why are we worried or concerned or bothered about whether um, organisms are in a biofilm or not? The reason is that the phenotype of these biofilm-grown cells is very, very different from that of planktonic cells. Bacteriology, the science of bacteriology, experimental bacteriology, has always concentrated on growing up bacteria and aqueous suspensions. In other words, has focused on planktonic cells. And we can see that there are a whole host of different physiological and biochemical activities which are altered by the biofilm mode of growth. So, um, so respiration rate, rate of substrate breakdown, growth rate are all affected by the mode of growth. Also the cell size, the morphology, the composition of the cell wall are all affected by the mode of growth. But critically, we find that bacteria growing in biofilms have a greatly decreased susceptibility to antimicrobial agents. And they can be almost a thousand times less susceptible to antibiotics than the corresponding planktonic cells. For example, so if you take P. gingivalis and you have it in an aqueous suspension, 
and compare that with the PG Novalis growing as a biofilm, you'll need a thousand times more antibiotic to kill the same number of cells as for the planktonic form. Also, there's a greatly decreased susceptibility to host defensive systems, especially um, phagocytosis. Uh, this decreased susceptibility is attributable to the reduced growth rate, the hindered diffusion of the antibiotic, the induction of starvation stress responses, upregulation of various efflux pumps, and the formation of persister cells. So we know quite a lot about why this phenomenon occurs. So <clears throat> if we could investigate the susceptibility of biofilms to lethal <coughs> photosensitization, then it's important we have a suitable laboratory model. So what is characteristic about um, disease-inducing oral biofilms? These are all basically um, stagnation areas, regions of plaque accumulation. And within these stagnation regions, what happens is that <coughs> the ecology is altered so that certain organisms, disease-inducing organisms, can eventually predominate in that stagnation region. So if we're going to look at, if we're going to grow oral biofilms in the laboratory, then we've got to try and simulate these stagnation areas and these particular habitats. So the key features of any device for generating dental plaques in the laboratory must be the following. The provision of stagnation areas, the continuous mechanical ablation of the biofilms, as we get with um, uh, chewing and sort of tongue movements, compression of the biofilms, and exposure of biofilms to fluid air interfaces as saliva moves over the biofilms and constantly forming and reforming. Other desirable attributes are um, uh, listed here. We should have facilities for the continuous flow of the nutrient source. We should be able to enable addition of other nutrients, enable use of appropriate substrata, for example, enamel or hydroxyapatite. We should be able to generate large numbers of identical biofilms for experimentation be able to provide appropriate atmosphere. For example, if we're trying to model the subgingival region, we should be capable of um, generating an anaerobic atmosphere, temperature control, and enabling biofilm thickness, uh, control of biofilm thickness. We have used the constant depth film fermenter, um, which can be regarded as an artificial mouth, to, um, because it provides all of these um, features. And what it consists of is a rotating turntable which rotates under um, a scraper blade. And in that turntable, we have PGFE pans, which are recessed to a particular depth. And we can preset these depths so that we can grow biofilms to any particular depth. So the medium comes in, this circulates, the, the bacteria accumulate in these regions here, and they will grow, providing they're provided with a medium. And once they reach a, reach a certain height, then they're scraped off so that we can have these biofilms with a constant depth. And this shows the different forces operating at different stages in biofilm formation. This is um, a young biofilm where we see that hydrostatic forces are the major forces operating on the biofilm. But as the biofilm grows and fills that pan, we then start getting mechanical shear as the bi biofilms are sheared. And this reflects what's going on in the oral cavity with constant uh, tongue movements, constant chewing, and salivary flow. So the CDFF, the constant depth film fermenter, is far better than many other classic um, biofilm um, uh, producing devices. And when growing up subgingival dental plaques, we've used an, an enamel substratum, we've created a microaerophilic micro atmosphere, we have a conditioning film consisting of serum and a medium of horse serum with tissue culture fluid, which is supposed to be a mimic of gingival curricular fluid. And as inoculum, we've used pooled subgingival plaque samples. And this is um, just how the whole system is set up. And these biofilms, we find that um, analyzing these biofilms, they have a composition similar to what you'd get in subgingival plaques. And this is a TEM of one of these biofilms, so they have the classic TEM structure. And this is an SEM of these plaques, um, showing very great similarity to ones taken from your cavity. And you can watch the development of these biofilms using confocal uh, microscopy. The red regions show heightened stacks of bacteria. The black 
means that you've got these valleys and troughs. And this is another composite image which shows the structure of one of these subjugal biofilms. So these red areas are um, coming out of the, um, uh, the slide, the black areas and the light green areas growing into the slide. And this is a confocal micrograph of one of these plaques. You can see these uh, biofilm-like structures permeated by water channels. And this is a cross-section showing these stacks of bacteria, which, as you can see, is similar to the structure of a naturally occurring plaque taken from the oral cavity. Um, these are the different structures. Here we <coughs> see the stacks. This is the water channel. And we stain this um, with the live dead stain. So the bacteria that are alive are um, green, and the bacteria that are dead are red. And this is a composite image showing the distribution of the live and the dead bacteria in these plaques. Um, one of my postdocs suffered from red-green color blindness. So I would pick the only postdoc in the planet to be color, red color blinded. Um, so he had to use green and blue as stains. The green is, um, shows live bacteria and the blue the dead bacteria. And so you can, this is a close-up image of one of these stacks. These are the green live bacteria and the blue the red bacteria, uh, the blue the dead bacteria. And if we're very clever, we might be able to show you a movie. That's a rather nice showing. You can see the stacks quite clearly in this movie. See these stacks? And these are the water channels.